Welcome everyone to another coffee tasting. I'm your host Aaron Taylor and today we are tasting the Costa Rica Naranjo for the second time. Uh, this time we're trying it three different ways. I believe last time we only tried it two ways. Uh, this time we're incorporating the Chemex. Last time we just tried it with the French press and the pour over. And uh, the reason why we like to try our coffee three different ways is to fully explore the different flavor notes that we get from the different brew methods, but from the same bag of coffee. And so that's very important because you might get a cup of coffee that you thought you didn't like, but you just didn't get to brew it the way you you prefer. And so this is all about learning about the different flavors that each brew method um, give us. And then also at the same time, we learn the stories of the coffee. And so for those of you who are joining me for the first time, welcome. It's an honor to have you guys join me for this coffee tasting. And for those of you guys who are returning, welcome. It is an honor to have you guys back and ha drive that curiosity for coffee culture and history. And so with this one, we are doing the Costa Rica Naranjo. And this one, we're going to get bright citrusy notes with a really nice milk chocolate finish. This is one of my favorite reserve coffees that we serve at Starbucks. So the difference between a, a blend of coffee and a single origin coffee like the Costa Rica Naranjo is the different flavors that you're going to get. So when we get like a blend of coffee or even some of the core bags of coffee you get from just any kind of regular uh, coffee supplier, you're getting a lot of different regions of that country jam-packed into one bag. And so you're going to get a lot of different flavors. And then there's some flavors that come out more than others. So when you get like Latin American coffees, you get like more of a milk chocolate notes or the dark chocolate notes from a lot of the different regions, but we don't get to taste the individual flavors that each region has to offer. And so with this, I, we're getting the blood orange citrusy notes. And so we're going to get a not as bright as a lemon flavor, but uh, not uh, so dull as like maybe like a cherry. And so we're going to get some subtle citrusy notes, uh, but we're going to get a really nice milk chocolate finish as well. And that's what's nice about single origin coffees is they all have different flavors that uh, come from the land and also the uh, processes that the growers choose to process their coffees. So and whether or not it's sun-dried or fully washed or semi-washed, um, that's going to impact the flavor as well as the, the what goes into the soil and how much uh, how much the air and uh, environment is impacting the coffee. And so all these have a factor to play in the flavors of the coffee. And the farmers go to a lot of work to make sure that we get desirable flavors uh, from our coffee. And then from there, it goes to the ro uh, roasters, and the roasters choose a specific roast setting, a specific darkness or lightness to the bean, uh, depending on the flavors that are adherent to the bean itself. And that way, we can properly bring out the flavors. We're not getting too much of a burnt flavor. We're not uh, under-roasting our beans either. That way, we get that proper flavor. So a lot of work goes into getting these different char uh, flavor characteristics to come out all these different types of coffee. And so making sure that we brew our coffee right is very important. And also exploring the different brew methods is also important so that we can fully explore the coffee that's being made for us and so that we can discover um, how we prefer to have that particular cup of coffee. So the differences between the three different brew methods 
is with the pour over, we're just getting a single paper filter. So we're filtering out a lot of the sediments because the sediments can't make its way through the paper filter. We might get a little bit that makes its way through, but not a whole lot. But what happens is the paper filter ends up absorbing some of the oils as well, but it only absorbs so much while the rest of the oils kind of push its way through. Um, so we're going to get a oil heavy coffee on the pour over when we compare it to the, uh, the sediments that's making its way through. So very, very little sediments, much more oils, um, than sediments in a regular pour over cup of coffee. And what that's going to do is it's going to impact the brightness and flavor of the coffee. So we're going to get a much more bright flavor. We're going to taste a lot more of those blood orange notes. And then with the Chemex, we have a triple paper filter, so we're going to absorb some more of those oils along with the sediments that are already being held back. And because of this, we're not getting as much of those bright citrusy flavors, so it's going to allow us to taste a lot more of those milk chocolate notes. Now with the French press, the French press is a fully immersed cup of coffee and it's a very, very coarse grind, so we're going to get very heavy sediments and a lot of oils as well. And so we're still going to end up with a fairly balanced cup of coffee on the French press, but it's going to be sediment oil heavy. So it's going to be heavy on the stomach and heavy on the palate. We're going to get a lot of flavor. So my favorite brew method most of the time is a French press just because we get that more balanced cup of coffee and then at the same time, I'm getting that full flavor that the coffee has to offer. If I were to choose a secondary favorite, it would probably be the Chemex. Just because we still get that balanced cup of coffee, because those oils are being filtered out to meet with the amount of sediments that are being filtered out. So we get that balanced flavor. But it is on a much lighter note. So we're not getting as many, the flavors aren't as strong, but it's still a balanced experience. While with the pour over, we're getting a more bright forward coffee. We're going to taste a lot more of those citrus or floral notes or the roasty notes, depending on what your bright citrusy flavors are in that particular cup of coffee. This guy needs a little bit more water. All right, so while we wait for the other ones to finish brewing, we're going to go ahead and taste the French press first. Normally, I like to start off with the pour over first, but it needs a little bit more water. And so that's very important when you're brewing your coffee is making sure that we get the proper proportions, the right amount of water, the right amount of grinds, and the right amount of time. And so with all that, that's going to make sure that you get the proper flavors from the coffee that the growers and the roasters intended for you to taste. Ooh, that's really good. So immediately right off the bat, we're getting those subtle citrusy notes. And then we almost get like a, a semi floral flavor as well. But we're primarily getting those uh, subtle citrus notes. And then as it starts to wash away, we get that sweet uh, milk chocolate flavor, and it's really, really good. And then we also get a little bit of a lingering citrus note as well, but it's not uh, very dominant. It's a, it's a very, very subtle flavor, so it's uh, not too intense. That is really good. As you, as you sip on that one a little bit more, we start to taste a little bit more of those milk chocolate notes. Those subtle citrus flavors start to um, disappear, kind of like you're getting used to the flavor. And as you get used to those citrus notes that hit your uh, tongue at the very uh, initial sip, um, as it starts to fade away, we're getting a lot more of those milk chocolate flavors. It's a uh, very smooth um, flavor as well. It's not too bitter and it's got a nice sweet uh, tone to it as well.
That is really good. I'm going to have to sip on that during the talk. All right, so now we're going to try the Chemex. The Chemex is going to be very similar to the French press in terms of balance, but we're going to have a, the flavor volume is going to be turned way down. We're going to have um, those subtle citrus notes and then the subtle milk chocolate notes together. So from the initial sip, or sorry, from the initial sniff on this coffee, we are definitely getting a lot more of those milk chocolate notes coming off the coffee. Oh yeah. So with this, we're actually getting a more milk chocolate forward coffee. The bright citrusy notes aren't nearly as predominant on here, even on the French press, with this we're getting uh, very, very smooth milk chocolate notes, very, very light citrus notes, almost non-existent, but they're definitely there, kind of brightening up the coffee a little bit, making sure that that milk chocolate flavor doesn't get too bitter. But it's definitely that milk chocolate forward flavor, and that's pretty much all we're tasting uh, in this cup of coffee. This is really good. If I have actually had to choose a favorite between these two right now, I would definitely choose the Chemex. Really good. That is delicious. Okay. So we've got the perfect amount of water in this pour over. And so with the pour over, we're going to get a very citrus forward coffee because we're getting a lot more of the oils and we're holding back all those sediments. So it's going to impact the flavor of the coffee. So just on the initial aroma of the coffee, it definitely doesn't have that milk chocolate or those chocolate aroma that the Chemex has. And we're definitely getting a lot more of those citrus bright notes coming off the coffee. Oh yeah. So in the, initially right off the bat, we're getting bombarded on the sides of our tongue with those citrus notes. But because of its uh, citrus qualities, it's a very mellow citrus flavor so it's not too intense for a pour over this is actually really pleasant really nice and smooth normally when we get like a citrusy coffee and i do a pour over it's a little bit too bright for my flavor but with this because the citrus notes on this particular cup of coffee is subtle to begin with it doesn't necessarily get that bright on a pour over all on its own and so uh, even as a pour over, this cup of coffee tastes really, really good because the citrus notes aren't too dominant. And that's pretty much what I look for in a good cup of coffee for myself, is looking for a cup of coffee that has more chocolate notes, and then the citrus notes are just more of like a subtle uh, background flavor. And that's just my personal preference, and everyone has their own personal preference of what they want their coffee to taste like. And that's why it's so important for us to explore different uh, coffees, it, it, whether or not it's from the same company or not. Um, just exploring the different coffees that each company has to offer, and then exploring the different brew methods for that coffee, or just kind of experimenting for yourself so you can kind of explore and figure out what the best brew method is for you so you can better enjoy your cup of coffee. So I think that's really, really important just to pay tribute to the people who grow the coffee and make sure that we get the proper flavors out of the coffee. And then just so that you can better enjoy your cup of coffee while you sit there, and read a book, and sip on your coffee, and do your morning routine. Just make it that much more pleasant because you've you've discovered your favorite brew method, the, the flavors that you really like. You have your blend or single origin coffee that you go to because those are the notes and flavors out of the coffee that you want to get. And so um, I, have a, I have a friend who really loves a strong floral coffee. And so 
I recommended the, to them a, um, a Kenya uh, single origin, which has strong floral notes with a very, very subtle milk chocolate flavor. So that way we're getting slight chocolate notes, but we're primarily getting those floral notes. And it has almost like a tea quality, especially when you brew it on a Chemex because it makes it that much lighter. And so with that, uh, my friend really liked that because he already likes a really dark tea and so with the like a like a really dark black tea and so with this we're almost kind of lightening up the coffee so much that it can almost like they can marry each other halfway in between so it's really interesting how we can kind of change the qualities of the coffee by exploring the different brew methods and then exploring the different regions that each region has to offer and flavors and then kind of just pairing those in hand in hand to get a flavor experience that best suits a particular person. Really cool. And so now we're gonna talk a little bit about Costa Rica Naranjo and what makes this coffee so special. And so for Costa Rica Naranjo, when coffee made its way to Costa Rica, the uh, Spanish settlers brought with them ox carts and they actually used ox carts to transport goods um, in the early days of settlement. And when they started growing coffee, they used the ox carts to help transport the beans and cherries for processing and exporting. Um, what's interesting to note is in the very beginning of exports and coffee growing, um, people pulled the ox carts. They weren't actually pulled by oxen, and it wasn't until uh, production ramped up and the demand for coffee became much greater is when the um, oxen were utilized to pull the ox carts. But a more important story about the ox carts is how they changed um, through the environment of Costa Rica. Because in Costa Rica, we have a rare, very rugged terrain. Uh, the wooden spoked wheels that were part of the ox carts when the Spanish brought them over uh, didn't handle it very well. The wooden spokes would break all the time. And so something that the Spanish did was they took the Aztec wheel and implemented it into the Spanish invention of the ox cart. So we have the Spanish invention brought over to Costa Rica with an Aztec inspiration implemented into it to increase the durability for that particular terrain. And so uh, it's kind of interesting how we just from just from that alone, we have a, an emergence of two different cultures uh, and technologies helping each other out in very early days to make a... Uh, process more uh, reliable and so you don't have wheels breaking all the time because you have a more solid wheel all it does increase the weight a little bit more but at the same time you're not having to replace your wheels every time you go over a, a large rock and so that's really cool and then I'd say the best part and the, the most enriching part of the Costa Rica history for Naranjo and this particular region of the world is how um, the farmers started to paint their ox carts with different geometric patterns and different colors and as you were to pass by a fellow farmer with your ox cart you knew whose farm that belonged to, the colors and geometric patterns were pretty much kind of like a flag on a boat telling you which company it belonged to. And so um, this became so much part of the culture in Costa Rica that they now have art festivals once a year where everyone brings their ox carts and they just show off the different colors and geometric patterns um, and then it, there's a whole much, whole bunch more that's part of these festivals than just the art. It's just an excuse for everyone to come together, connect, explore uh, everyone's individual cultures and their practices, and then just learn a little bit more about, like, say, like their coffee that they grow or any other goods that they export, and then learn a little bit about what inspires the colors and geometric patterns on their ox carts. 
So super cool. I definitely um, plan on visiting this festival uh, at some point in my life just because I would love to explore the different ox carts, maybe even get to meet some of these coffee growers uh, myself so that I can better learn their stories personally and then just show my dedication for the amount of work that goes into the coffee um, and then just give them my thanks myself because um, the amount of work that is required to get beans from the field to my table or your table and all of our table is a lot of work and they just uh they deserve that 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 thanks and appreciation for the amount of work that goes into making our coffee and then the how coffee impacts the environment and the culture of the people uh, it's just amazing. So I'd love to really explore and discover firsthand how these people were impacted and learn their stories firsthand. So really cool. Costa Rica is all about um, merging technologies between two different people and then at the same time creating a vibrant culture through art and geometric patterns and sharing that with everyone else in your in your culture so that uh it really helps everyone grow and thrive so really awesome the stories that this coffee has to share with us what it means to come together as a community and share each other our arts and uh hard work and passions so thank you everyone for joining me on today's coffee tasting i hope that you guys enjoyed and i hope you're coffee was just as delicious as mine was if you are curious about Costa Rica Naranjo and you want to try it you can get it at your local Starbucks reserve store or reserve bar so thank you guys have a great day and I will see you this Friday as we try Vietnam Delat and if you enjoyed today's coffee tasting go ahead and hit the link above that is going to be a list of coffee tastings that I have done in the past and the link down below is just a YouTube video that YouTube thinks that you might like. Have a great day.